Hi, my name is Steve Bowler, and in this video, I'm going to be configuring Dynamic Trunking Protocol, otherwise known as uh, DTP. Uh, dynamic Trunking Protocol is used between uh, switches to uh, form trunk links over, you know, uh, uh, switch ports on the switches. Um, and as you will see here in my uh, GNS3 topology, here I have switch 1 using FA0, Fast Ethernet 13, 0, 013, and switch 2 using Fast Ethernet 0, 013. Uh, inside of GNS3, I'm not going to be doing any of the config. I'm going to be doing uh, the configuration on two physical 3550s that I have in my lab. Um, GNS3 will be used in this lab solely for demonstration for, uh, for topology use only. Okay, so with DTP, our dynamic trunking protocol, uh, like I said, it's used to form um, trunk ports uh, on your switches. And right here I have two 3550s. Um, what I'm going to be using here for the lab, the default mode for 3550s using dyna dynamic trunking protocol is the mode switch port mode dynamic desirable. And what this will do is this will actively initiate uh, the trunk negotiation. So it'll send, you know, frames ac across to the other switch uh, on the other side that is connected to trying to negotiate a trunk port between the two switches. Um, the 3560s, on the other hand, um, the default mode is dynamic auto. Uh, and if the switch port is in dynamic auto, uh, it'll respond only if trunk negotiation is requested. So say you have, you know, switch port mode trunk, say your, your link is hard coded as a trunk on one side and then you have auto on the other side, uh, you're going to form a, uh, a trunk across that link. Uh, but if both of your sides, you know, on your, on your link from switch one to switch two, um, if they're both set to auto, you'll have uh, no, um, no trunk will be formed. Uh, as you can probably uh, have uh, are thinking, uh, to have your switch port modes in dynamic desirable is not a good security feature, as uh, t as it can lead to uh, people. You know, if someone puts in a rogue switch into your network and they have their sites set for dynamic desirable, are auto, are on. Uh, what's going to happen is a trunk link is going to form. Uh, between your switch and the rogue switch and uh, then they'll have access you know to all your VLAN data and all your trunking information uh, so it's a best practice to you, you know um, put your switch ports on your switches into an uh, switch port mode access um, instead of having them be trunk links uh, the only difference really between a trunk link and an access port is the trunk link will carry all VLANs uh, unless otherwise uh, suggested are, are, you know, configured. All trunk links will, will you know, all VLANs will write over a trunk link, whereas a switch port, uh, you can only have uh, a switch port, if it's in access mode, it can only access one VLAN. So best practice is to just create a VLAN and put all your your ports that aren't uh, you're not you know doing trunking on put all those ports into an access uh, VLAN that you're not using for anything in your you know in your layer 2 switching topology on your network so what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna see the modes I'm just gonna run through a couple of modes here uh, with dynamic trunking protocol so you can uh, you know you know, get a grasp on, on what it's used for. So here on switch one, I'm just going to do a show run interface FA013. And as you can see here, the port shut down. It's in dynamic desirable, which is the default mode on the 3550s. Um, I've reset these switches recently, so they have no config on them. And as you can see, These ports are set back to default 
configuration. So on both sides here from switch one to switch two, uh, switch port mode is dynamic desirable. So if I were just to go ahead right now, leaving the configuration as it is, both sides at dynamic desirable, if I go ahead and just do a no shut here on both sides of this trunk link, I'm going to scroll this out here so you guys can see a little more of what's going on here. Maybe not that much. Okay, here on switch one now, if, to check your, you know, your DTP uh, information, your configuration, uh, you can just do a show interface and then your interface and then just do switch port. That'll give you a lot of good information on, on uh, your interface switch configuration. So as you can see here, switch port is enabled. Uh, the administrative mode is dynamic desirable. The operational mode is a trunk. And as you can see here, negotiation of trunking is on. You can change that by doing a switch port. Uh, no negotiate. Also, the operational trunking encapsulation is ISL. As you uh, probably already know uh, in your studies, you have uh, ISL encapsulation and .1Q. ISL is Cisco proprietary and .1Q is the industry standard IEEE. So um, as you can see here to check to see all your trunks on your switch uh, you can just do a show interface trunk and as you can see here port FA013 mode is desirable, encapsulation is already uh, set here for ISL, status is trunking, and it shows the VLANs a lot on the trunk. So as you can see, we have successfully uh, successfully configured a trunk link. If we go to switch two and just do a show interface, show interface trunk, you can see here that the mode is desirable. Uh, ISL is encapsulation type, status is trunking. So we do have created a successful uh, trunk link between these two ports. Um, now what we wanna do here is I wanna show you, uh, if we go back into here and do a to shut down the ports and I'm gonna put both sides here into auto so if I do switch port <coughs> mode and then as you can see here your modes for your switch ports you have access which is where you would you know set it as an access port and then you know, you can do uh, switch port mode access and then you can select the, uh, the VLAN that you want to put it in, switch port, uh, with that command is switch port access, VLAN. So you have under switch port mode, you have access port, you can create a trunking link, which is what we're doing. So if you sweat switch port mode trunk, you're going to be trunking unconditionally. Uh, that's just manually configuring it as to where you know the port is 